time of year they're flying overhead and they're leaving. Good evening and welcome. Tonight we're going to be looking at some maps of Asia. And yes, Halloween is coming. I've got some Halloween deals. I know these aren't particularly Asian. They're more Central American, South American kind of nails, but whatever. They're still really cool. And they glow in the dark. It's so close. Anyway, moving on to Asia, let's talk about its countries and borders. There we go. My desk is just not big enough for this book. There we go. It says, the vast continent of Asia includes two giant nations, China and India each with a population of more than a billion people and with rapidly growing economies. To the north is the world's biggest country by area, the Russian Federation. To the west lie the countries of the Middle East, today the center of the Islamic world. Let's check out this big old map of Asia of all the different countries. Let's see up here we have the Russian Federation. It says Three quarters of the Russian Federation, commonly known as Russia, lies in Asia, making it the continent's largest country. Way over here we can see Israel. It says the state of Israel was established in 1948. And here is India. With a population of 1.27 billion, India is the world's largest democracy. And then, of course, China. It says relatively closed to the outside world until the 1970s. China now plays a major role on the world's political stage. And down here we can see Indonesia. The world's largest island nation, Indonesia is made up of more than 13,000 islands. Oh, over here we have the dividing line. I can't see. There are so many geese outside. What is going on? There's like a mass migration happening in the middle of the night. The dividing line. The western half of the island of New Guinea lies in Asia. The eastern half is in Australasia and Oceania. And up here we have Japan. It says Japan is a major industrial power and has the world's fourth largest economy. Let's see, I think that's all the little details. Um, let's see, there's always a little fact down here that's like impossible to get in frame, so I'll just read it to you. It says, Asia is the only continent in the world that shares borders with three other continents. <laughs> it's probably because there's only two continents in the other hemisphere, but whatever. Let's talk about Asia's very, very cool landscape. It says Asia covers approximately 30% of Earth's land area and makes up the eastern portion of the Eurasian supercontinent, with Europe lying to the west. It is made up of five different landscapes, mountain systems, plateaus, plains, steppes, which are large areas of unforested grassland, and deserts. So let's see what we've got here. Let's start on this side with Japan. It says, uh, the country is made up of 6,852 islands, of which the largest is Honshu. You can see right there, Honshu. And got all these mountains down here. Here is a number. Number two pertains to the longest river in Asia, the Yangtze River. And up here is the Great Plain of China says this relatively flat area of land is one of the most densely populated regions in the world. We've got another number down here. The largest island is Borneo, the largest island in Asia. Over here it says Indonesian Islands. Indonesia is the world's most volcanic country in the world. It is home to 147 volcanoes, 76 of which are active. And up here, in India, we have the Indian Shield, this big flat area. Its collision with the Eurasian Plate has created the Himalayas, the world's tallest mountain system. 
Speaking of which, there's a number here for the highest point in Asia, Mount Everest. And the highest point in the world also. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Up here we have the West Siberian Plain. One of the largest plains in the world, it is a vast system of marshes. Over here we have a number. The largest lake is the Caspian Sea. And over here we have the Dead Sea, a salt lake bordering Israel, the West Bank, and Jordan. At 1,286 feet below sea level, it is the lowest land point on Earth's surface. And, oh, there's a little thing about Borneo, a really beautiful picture, too. It's not only the largest island in Asia, but the third largest island in the world. I think that's all for the little facts on the page, so let's read this. Down here it says Asia, the world's largest continent, has both the highest and lowest land points on Earth. You know, I've never thought about it like that. You've got the highest point and the lowest point. Ooh, some fascinating facts about Asia. There are 16 time zones in Asia. Let's see if we can find them all. We have one, two, three, up here two, four, five, and Pakistan two, six. Afghanistan has its own time zone. Hmm. We're most likely getting to this country next month in my series, so I guess we'll find out why then. That was six. Yes. Number seven. Number eight, nine, it's just like Nepal, I suppose. Uh, ten, just for Myanmar, I wonder what's going on here. Eleven, there's twelve, down here too, it's more of a number eleven. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. What a strange little map. What is happening here? I don't know. We'll have to figure out why when we cover these countries. I knew Russia had a lot of time zones, but my goodness. <laughs> That's so interesting. Europe has 13 landlocked countries. They are Afghanistan, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarus, Bhutan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Laos, Mongolia, Nepal, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan. The fastest train is the Shanghai Maglev train in China. Which makes sense because it's a Maglev train, so there's no friction, it just goes. The longest railroad tunnel is the Seikan Tunnel in Sugaru Strait in Japan. The longest subway line is the Guangzhou Metro Line 3 in Guangzhou, China. And the longest road tunnel is the Zhishan Tunnel in Shanxi, China. The longest coastline belongs to Indonesia. The busiest airport is Beijing International Airport in China. The tallest buildings, let's see if I can move this just a smidge more. There we go. The tallest building in Asia and the world is the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, UAE. Next is the Shanghai Tower in Shanghai, China. The Mecca Royal Clock Tower in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. Taipei 101 in Taipei, Taiwan. And Shanghai World Finance Center in Shanghai, China. The biggest glacier is the Fedchenko Glacier in Tajikistan. Let's see, for waterfalls, the tallest is the Hanoki Falls in Toyama, Japan, but the largest by volume is the Chute de Kun in Laos. The deepest lake, and the deepest lake in the world, is Lake Baikal in Russia. I want to do a whole video on Lake Baikal, because that just, maybe I'll do a podcast episode about it someday. It is like one of the weirdest, coolest places in the world. The most active volcano is Mount Merapi in Indonesia. They're just going boom. Extreme points. All right, let me try my Russian here. 
the northernmost point in Asia is the Mish Artichescu in Russia. And the easternmost point is Mish Dejneva in Russia. The southernmost point is Pulau Panama in Indonesia. And the westernmost point is Bozhka Adashi in Turkey. I don't know if that's right. There's no accent marks, so I'm assuming. The highest mountains in Asia. Guess where they all are. Number one, of course, is Mount Everest in Nepal slash Tibet in China. Number two is K2 in China, Pakistan. Number three is Kangchenjunga in India slash Nepal. Number four, which I've never known how to pronounce. I've always assumed it's Lhotse, like a Lhotse Opso dog. Anyway, Lhotse, Lhotse in Nepal slash Tibet in China. And number five is Makalu in Nepal slash Tibet in China. All in the Himalayas, of course. The most visited cities in Asia are Bangkok, Thailand, Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, Seoul, South Korea, and Hong Kong. The tallest bridge in Asia is, wow, the Duge, I assume, uh, Beipan River Bridge in Lupanshui, Jijiao, China. And it also says down here the world's three tallest bridges are all in Asia. The Duge Beipan River Bridge, the Sidu River Bridge, and the Puli Bridge. The longest bridge in Asia, and the longest bridge of any type in the world, is the Danyang Shan Grand Bridge in Beijing slash Shanghai High Speed Railroad. 102 miles long. Isn't that something? I wonder if that's the one the Maglev's on. That looks like the same. Anyway. Let's check out the population map. A really cool map to look at for Asia since it has such intense population numbers, doesn't it? Asia contains some of the most populous regions on Earth. The plains of eastern China, the Ganges, Brahmaputra, rivers in India, Japan, and the Indonesian island of Jakarta all have very high population densities. By contrast, Siberia and the plateau of Tibet are virtually uninhabited. So let's look at the map, and I'll point out the largest cities. The largest is Shanghai, China, right here. This big spike. There's a little box here about it, too. It says, with a population of 24.3 million, Shanghai, China, located on the country's east coast, is the most populous city in the world. Number two is Karachi, Pakistan. Number three is Beijing, China. Number four is Delhi, India. Number five is Tanjin, China. Number six is Tokyo, Japan. There's a dot. Oh, because of this picture. It's a picture of Tokyo. Number seven is Guangzhou, China. Number eight is Mumbai, India. Number nine is Shenzhen, China. And number ten down here is Jakarta, Indonesia. Let's read this. It talks about Java. The Indonesian island is the world's most populous island. 139.4 million people live here. Let's read about China. Look at this population density compared to over here where the mountains and deserts are. It says with a population of 1.37 billion people, China is home to approximately one-fifth of the world's population. busy, busy, and then Mongolia. It says, the least densely populated country in Asia, with an average of four inhabitants per square mile, or two people per square kilometer. Let's look at Bangladesh. You already know this fact if you've seen my video on Bangladesh. Of all the countries in the world with a population of over 100 million, Bangladesh has the highest population density, 2,948 people per square mile, or 1,138 per square kilometer. India, I 
which you can see is basically all orange and red. It says India has the world's second largest population at 1.27 billion, but it is expected to be the world's most populous country by 2028. Isn't that interesting? I didn't know that. Let's slide over here. Let's talk about Bahrain over here. Bahrain has a population of 1.3 million, but projections suggest that the figure will double in 10 years, the fastest growth rate of any Asian country. And then we have Turkey over here. Lots of big spikes. Turkey is the most populous country in the Middle East with a population of 80.3 million. And the little fact at the bottom that I can't get in frame says over half of Asia's population of 4.5 billion lives in either China or India. That makes sense. Ooh, the Himalayas. fascinating place in the world. The Himalayas are the world's highest mountain range. It runs in an arc of 1,500 miles or 2,400 kilometers long, spread across five countries, Pakistan, India, Nepal, Bhutan, and China. It is also the source of some of the region's major rivers, including the mighty Ganges and Brahmaputra rivers. Let's check out, let's just go left to right, starting at the top. The Karakoram Range. It says this vast mountain range lies to the west of the Himalayas and contains the highest concentration of peaks over 26,247 feet or 8,000 meters on earth. That's a lot of peaks. What else do we see? The Taklamakan Shamu. Taklamakan Desert. A lifeless, sand-shifting desert, the famed Silk Road passed along its northern and southern fringes. Let's check out the Siwalik Range. Right here, Siwalik Range. An outer range of the Himalayas that extends more than 1,000 miles from east to west, or 1,600 kilometers. Here's a pink dot. That's for Kathmandu. The capital city of Nepal, Kathmandu, has a population of 1.18 million people and is a gateway for tourism in the Himalayas. Didn't know that many people lived in Kathmandu. Here's all the big peaks. So let's see, the red one is... Where's, oh, the key's over here. All right, the red one is Cho Oyu. The orange one is Mount Everest. This tan one is Lhotse. This maroon one is... Wait. Wait. The maroon one. The red one. I'm so confused. Okay. There's... One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so the... I'll just... Okay. The orange one's Mount Everest. The blue one is Kangchenjunga. This one's Lhotse. This one's Makalu. Okay. It's like a different color in the, the little chart here. I'm not, okay, I'm not crazy. Look at this. Is this the same color as this or is it just my eyes? I guess they're kind of the same color here. It looks red there. It looks purple. But anyway, that's neither here or there. We have Cho Oyu, Everest, Lhotse, Makalu, Changchenjunga, which is a great name. Here's Bhutan. The small Himalayan kingdom only opened its borders to foreigners in 1974. We have a dot here for Timpu. At 8,688 feet, Timpu in Bhutan is the third highest capital city in the world, after La Paz in Bolivia and Quito in Ecuador. What else do we have right here? It's the Ganges River. It's which I did a whole video on. You know, if I remember, I'm going to link in the description below all the videos I've done that are mentioned in this book. So check that out if you want to know more about the Ganges River. But here it says, the Ganges is the most sacred river of the Hindu religion. It rises in the Himalayas and flows through India and Bangladesh to the Bay of Bengal. 
Oh, let's talk about Mount Everest. There's the peak. Situated on the border between Nepal and Tibet, China, Mount Everest is the world's tallest mountain. It's just, actually, the numbers are different now. It's no longer 29,029 feet. It's Anyway, I don't remember the number. <laughs> I remember it was right when I started this channel, I had this weird nightmare that I was stranded on the top of Mount Everest and didn't know how to get down or call for help. It was really terrifying, but it was also really beautiful up there. But I didn't like it. Here we can see the Brahmaputra River. One of Asia's major rivers, it cuts through China, Bhutan, India, and Bangladesh before flowing into the Bay of Bengal. And let's see, there's a dot right here. I think it's the last dot we have. It's for the Tsangpo Gorge. says with an average depth of 16,400 feet or 5,000 meters, Tsangpo Gorge in Tibet, China is the deepest canyon in the world. I mean, it makes sense when you've got all these gigantic mountains, you're going to have gigantic gorges. Look at the waterfalls. So pretty. What an interesting place. Let me see. The fact down here says the Himalayas are still rising at a rate of 0 .25, 0 0.25 inches per year, but that growth is offset by erosion and weathering, or four millimeters. Famous landmarks. There's so many cool, cool places in China. Let's read this box first. Asia is a continent of huge contrasts. It was the birthplace of some of the earliest human civilizations, has been a hub for many of the world's great religions, such as Islam, Hinduism, and Buddhism, and today is the site of some of the world's most amazing modern architecture. Where shall we start? Let's start bottom to top. We have the Komodo National Park in the Lesser Sunda Islands in Indonesia. We have Borobudur in Mangalang, Indonesia. The world's largest Buddhist temple, it dates to the 9th century BCE. Here's the Kampong Ayer in Bandar Seri Bhagawan Brunei. And for here we have the Patronus Towers in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. There's a little note here about it. It says, at 1,483 feet, they are the world's tallest twin towers. Here's Angkor Wat. Built in the 12th century, it's the world's largest religious monument. It's in Cambodia. We have the Mai Son Sanctuary in Quang Nam, Vietnam. Let's go to the Philippines. We have the Banawi Rice Terraces in Ifugao, Philippines, and the Pauwe Church. Let me move this a little closer. In Yokos Norte, Philippines. Um. Up here in Japan, we have the Imperial Palace in Tokyo. Here are the volcanoes of Kamchatka in Russia. Up here are the Lena Pillars Nature Park in Siberia. It's a spectacular rock pillars rise from the Lena River to reach a height of 330 feet or 100 meters. Here's the Great Wall of China, or the Jin Shanling section near Beijing. A dot for it. It says down here, built over the course of 2,000 years, the Great Wall of China is a series of non continuous walls built as protection from raiders and invaders. Its many branches add up to a length of 13,170 miles or 21,196 kilometers. What else do we have in China? Oh, and here in Seoul we have Gyeongbokgung Palace in Seoul, South Korea, the Shanghai Tower in Shanghai. The Forbidden City in Beijing, the International Commerce Center in Hong Kong, the Terracotta Army in Shan, China. It says a collection of 8,000 figures that depict the armies of Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor of China. There's the Genghis Khan statue in Urdin, Mongolia, the Mogao Caves in Duanhang, China. 
situated on the ancient silk road the site's 492 caves are famous for their statues and wall paintings here's the lashan giant buddha in mount Ame in china here's ayutthaya in thailand bagan in myanmar the potala palace in lhasa tibet slash china it's a little contentious but the Taj Mahal, the white marble mausoleum, which is a building that covers a burial chamber, attracts 8 million visitors a year. We have the Meenakshi Amman Temple in Madurai, India. This Hindu temple lies at the heart of the ancient Indian city of Madurai. Here's the Gateway of India in Mumbai. This is the... Bad Shahi Mosque in Lahore, Pakistan. This is the Shah Zinda Mausoleum in Samarkand, Uzbekistan. The Mausolea of Koja Ahmed Yasui in T Turkestan, Kazakhstan. I wonder if that means like Turkmenistan and Kazakhstan. I don't know. Anyway, we have the Fortress of Nisa in Turkmenistan. Fortress forms part of an ancient city that was totally destroyed by an earthquake in the first decade BCE. The Citadel of Herat in Afghanistan, which is a note here, it says it dates back to 330 BCE when Alexander the Great arrived in Herat with his army. We have Persepolis in Marvdasht, yeah, Marvdasht, Iran. The Ziggurat of Ur in Nasira, Nasiriya, Iraq right there. The Burj Khalifa in Dubai, UAE. It's so standing at 2,715 feet or 828 meters. The Burj Khalifa in Dubai, United Arab Emirates is the tallest man-made structure in the world. Completed in 2009, it has 163 floors, including the world's highest observation deck on the 148th floor, 57 elevators, and 8 escalators. Did a whole podcast episode about the Burj Khalifa. You can check that out in my memberships. Here's the Great Mosque of Sana'a in Yemen. The Mecca Royal Clock Tower in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. It says, the, there you go, the tower contains the world's largest clock face. And the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem, Israel. The world's oldest standing Islamic monument dates to the 7th century CE. Let me make sure I got everybody. Oh, see, look, I skipped the Church of St. Nicholas in Omsk, Russia. It's really pretty. Russian churches always have these onion domes. And I think I got everything now. Let's see, the little fact at the bottom says China's the most visited country in Asia. In 2015, 56.9 million tourists flocked to the country. Climate these rainbows of colors of climate. Move this up. I've really got to reorganize my desk if I can't add more space to it. But anyway, climate. Because of its enormous size, the climate in Asia varies dramatically from the polar cold of the north to the dry desert environments of the southwest and center and the hot, humid conditions of the tropical south continent is home to some of the coldest, hottest, driest, and wettest places on earth. Let's go top to bottom this time. Let's start over here at the hottest place. The hottest temperature ever recorded in Asia was 129 degrees Fahrenheit or 53.9 degrees Celsius at Tirat Svi, Israel on June 21st, 1942. Here are the Siberian winds. It says cold, dry air sweeps west from Siberia and can affect weather patterns as far west as Italy in Europe. And here's the coldest temperature. On February 5th and 7th, 1892, the temperature fell to negative 90 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 67.8 degrees Celsius in Verkhoyansk. Ver Verkhoyansk, Russia, the lowest temperature ever recorded in Asia. Over here we can see the East Asian monsoons. 
In East Asia, prevailing winds change direction during the year, bringing a warm, wet summer monsoon and a cold, dry winter monsoon. Here's a typhoon. Tropical storms are called typhoons in the Pacific Ocean. The storm season typically occurs between May and October. Let's look at the wettest place right here. It says, Meghalaya State in India holds the world record for the average amount of precipitation received annually, 467.4 inches or 11,872 millimeters per year. Over here we have a cyclone. Tropical storms known as cyclones in the Indian Ocean form in the Bay of Bengal before sweeping northward over land, sometimes with catastrophic results. Monsoon winds. It says a monsoon is a seasonal change in the direction of the prevailing winds. In India, the change brings rain in the summer and dry cold winds in the winter. Over here we can see the driest place in Europe. It's Aden in Yemen is Asia's driest location. It receives an average of 1.8 inches or 45.7 millimeters of rain annually. I think that was it for this map at least. Down here it says life in Asia is critically dependent on monsoon rains. A weak monsoon rainy season may cause drought and crop failures. I love animals. It says, from east to west, the continent of Asia stretches almost halfway around the world. As such, it contains a vast area of habitats, from arctic tundra and high cold plateaus to barren deserts and damp, lush rainforests. The continent's area of wildlife is as vast and varied as the landscape itself. Let's go east to west then and look at all the animals start off with the polar bear. The largest land carnivore in the world, it is only found in the Arctic. It's Arctic. Well, uh, no, Arc, Arc, yeah, is Latin for bear, so it's the place where bears are, and the Antarctic is the place where there's no bears. Here's the Stellar's sea eagle. Weighing up to 20 pounds or 9 kilograms, it's the heaviest eagle in the world. Here's the Siberian tiger. The largest of the tiger species, it can grow up to 13 feet or 4 meters in length. Here's the Japanese macaque, known for sitting in those hot springs. The world's most northern living primate. It's also known as the snow monkey. Here's a clouded leopard. Named for the distinctive clouded spots on its coat, it is an excellent climber. Here's the Philippine crocodile. A freshwater crocodile, it has a broad snout and thick bony plates on its body. And here's the Komodo dragon, the world's largest lizard. It can consume 80% of its body weight in a single meal. There's a proboscis monkey with its big nose. It says its large fleshy nose is used to attract mates. Here's the Bornean orangutan. I was talking with my friend here, if you're watching, you know, how in America we say orangutan, but like that's not how it's spelled at all. And in other English speaking countries, it's not spelled like this whatsoever and it's pronounced orangutan. But anyway, in America, for some reason, we say orangutan, and I don't know why. It says it's the most intelligent of the primates. Its name translates to man of the forest. Dole? Dole? I'm not sure. I've never heard of it. It looks like a little fox. It says it's a highly social animal well known for its vocal calls. Here's a big old king cobra. It's, 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 it's reaching lengths of up to 18 feet. Oh my, I didn't know it was that long. Or 5.5 meters. My gosh. It's the world's longest venomous snake. That's something I learned today. Let's check back down here real quick to see the Sumatran rhinoceros, the smallest of the rhinoceroses. It's one of the world's most endangered species. And here's the Siamang, I believe. 
the largest of the gibbons. It has a throat pouch that can be inflated to the size of its head. That's interesting. Learned that too. Animals are so cool. Here's the Asian golden cat, an elusive forest predator that preys on small mammals and birds. And here's a big yak yak. Similar to the American bison, it is adapted to living at altitude iconic animal of Asia, the giant panda. The rarest member of the bear family, 99% of its diet is bamboo. Here's the Baikal seal, another cool fact about Lake Baikal. Only found in Lake Baikal, Siberia, it is the only true seal that lives exclusively in fresh water. Here's the beautiful Arctic fox. An incredibly hardy animal that is common throughout the Arctic region. Here's the Siberian musk deer. During the breeding season, males grow fangs instead of antlers. I'm learning so much from this page. That's so weird. The Tibetan fox is very cute. It's a small fox only found on the plateau of Tibet. And the Bengal tiger powerful nocturnal hunter that preys on large mammals. Uh, Gariel. Look at this thing. My gosh. It looks like a dinosaur. One of the longest of all living crocodilians measuring up to 20.5 feet or 6.25 meters in length. Here's the beautiful Asian elephant. Slightly smaller than its African counterpart, it is identified by its smaller, rounder ears. Is a water buffalo. First domesticated in India 5,000 years ago, it is widespread throughout South Asia. Here's the Bactrian camel. The other, the one hump remembers dromedary. D has one bump. A Bactrian has two, like the letter B. A two humped camel native to the steppes of Central Asia. Here's the Iranian wolf lives in a variety of habitats from arid deserts to lush forests. Oh, here we go. The dromedary camel. The one big bump. The single humped camel can travel up to 100 miles a day in the desert without water. And the beautiful Arabian leopard. An opportunistic hunter that lives in mountainous areas. I think I got all the animals. Asia has some cool, cool says on the bottom, more people depend on the world's 130 million water buffalo than on any other domesticated animal on earth. This is the coolest page. Let's look at the night map. I like this map too. It's a whole new way to look at the world by night. The satellite image of Asia at night shows how the continent's huge population is concentrated in small pockets of land. India, northern China, and southern Korean Peninsula and Japan are densely populated, whereas Siberia and Central Asia are virtually empty. Let's start over in the west at the Arabian Peninsula. Careful, put the book down so you can slide it. A large portion of the Arabian Peninsula is an area of desert known as the Empty Quarter. That looks pretty empty. Here's Oman. This country has had the fastest rate of urbanization in Asia over the past five years at 8.54%. India, of course, it says home to 1.27 billion people, but only 32.7% of the population lives in towns or cities. Check out the Indus Valley. It's hopping up here, isn't it? Always has been since the dawn of humans. <laughs> this river valley in northern Pakistan is home to some of the country's largest cities, including Lahore and Islamabad. Down here is Bangkok. Almost one-sixth of Thailand's 68.2 million people live in or around the country's capital, Bangkok. Down here is Singapore, which I just covered on my channel. One of three territories in Asia, along with Hong Kong and Macau, in which the entire population live in an urban environment. Here we can see the Philippines. 
capital city right there. Lots of other little dots. The national capital region of the Philippines, which includes Manila, is the country of Manila, the country's capital, is home to 12.9 million people. There's a dot here for Hong Kong. Very beautiful Hong Kong. It says, Hong Kong has a population of 7.35 million, making it the 21st largest city in Asia, but the city is the fourth most densely populated territory on Earth, with a staggering 17,294 inhabitants per square mile, or 6,682 per square kilometer. There's a dot over here on Sri Lanka, too, that I missed. Over here, it says... Only 18.4% of Sri Lanka's 22 million population live in towns and cities, the lowest figure of any Asian country. That's interesting, too. Up here we can see North Korea is completely black, except for that dot. Almost 61% of North Korea's population of 25.1 million live in an urban environment, but electricity shortages in the country mean few lights shine at night. Here we can see Tokyo, Yokohama. 38 million people live in and around the cities of Tokyo and Yokohama. And up here, this is so cool, you can see the Trans-Siberian Railway. All lit up, isn't that neat? Bright lights mark a dotted line across Siberia, showing the route of the Trans-Siberian Railway. You can trace out Snowpiercer. <laughs> Look at all these dots up here. Dots, 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 dots. So cool. Tiny, tiny, tiny dots. And lots of big dots and little dots. And big dots and little dots. And big dots. And little dots of light. Light, light, light. So pretty. That's where we're going to end the video. Hope you found this video relaxing and educational. I know I did. I hope you have a very good, 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 good.